Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can create a fully dynamic form input selector like this that will work with the data coming from your database and will accordingly update the selector input variable in your WIS project. And the best part about this, it works 100% without any code. It's all no code. Yeah, so let's get started with this. So first of all, we want to have a custom module, which is a custom element, the selector module. And this custom element right here will just have the styling applied to it however you want your selector to look. And we're going to add with skeleton on here as well for seven and a half seconds about, oh, no, for 750 milliseconds. Um, because when we're going to refresh the site, we're going to see, so it's like less than a second. And when we're going to refresh the site, we see we have a little loading animation in here because it's, it's taking some time to load the data from the database, as you can see right here. Take some time while, while we're setting this in here. So we're not actually needing to use jQuery in this case, because if we go inside the selector module, we have the selector. So this is again a custom component, and we have the tag of select applied to it. We add the name of selector, the ID of my selection, so you can name it however you want. And then we add the WIST attribute in here of selector input. Now this will be where we will store the value that we'll, that we'll be seeing in waste when we're going to, um, when we're going to set a value. So we see selector input. We're going to set this variable on this custom component so that we can get the, the input in waste that was selected in this form selector as an input. Perfect. And now let's go in the input, because as you can see, the selector has children nested in it, and they're not visible. So let's add hi in here. So we'll, you'll see the children, right? So we have multiple children in here. And the idea is that we're going to render a list of different ch children, as many selections as you want from your database, um, using the render list action in WIST that will then populate those in the native browser interface, depending on whatever computer you're using, and we'll populate this fields dynamically using the render list action. So we're going to utilize the power of HTML in the custom component and the flexibility of waste to find the workaround to get this data in here dynamically. So yeah, we're going to render this dynamically. So those are the elements in the selector that will be then the select options, the options you'll be able to select from. And we want to only have one item in here because we're going to render those as a list. So that's why we don't have any text input here. And we apply waste cloak on it just to make sure for a little bit best practices that we don't have any content flashing, all of that. And we're going to apply a waste attribute of selector item. This will be the attribute we're going to target when we're going to render the list of all the selections. We're going to render a list of all the selections from the selector item. And then, very important, we need to add the tag of option because this will be the option for our selector, this field where those options are nested in. So we will render the options in the selector. So this is the selector and here are the options in the selector. And we're going to render those as a list. And this field will contain the selected value and will send this to WIST and tell it, oh yeah, this is right now laser. So this is how we're going to do that. And that's the Webflow part of that. So let's go right into WIST because it is super simple. So first of all, on page load, we need to load the data we're going to get from our database. And we need from our database a text and a value. So the text can be formatted however you want, can have emojis in there or not, or spacing or whatever. And then we need the value, which is all lowercase, um, ideally something that is already working within your database, because you don't want to have a value that you cannot identify, right? The, val the idea of a value is to have an identifier. So Snowball, Snow Mobile could technically have the value of one or of one ED. 
or something like this. You can use the value for whatever you want for internal purposes. So let's get into this here. So we see we have the selector item. This is this item nested in our selector. This is the option we're setting here using the option tag where we're going to set the text in it and we're going to set the value right now in waste. So right now, first of all, we need to render the list. So we're taking this item and we're rendering the list. And we're rendering this list from our array we're going to get from our database with all the different um, values. So we have the text, we have the value, and all of that. We're going to render it from this. We need text and value. And this is what Wiz is right now doing is it's basically rendering this as a list. It's multiplying this item as many times as it needs to to render the list, to have every item as a list item that comes from our database. So this is what that is doing. And now we're going to use the vIterator in there so we can index it, we can iterate over it. And then we're going to do set text because in this field, as you can see here, we have the option for the select item to add text in here, right? So we don't want to do this hard coded in Webflow. We want to do this on the waste side of things. So we're going to use set text here to add the name. In this case, as you can see, snow mobile. Snow mobile. So we'll see snow, bell, snow mobile in here as the text. But now we need to have the value because as you can see, when I select, for example, FinSuite, uh, it will say FinSuite in lowercase. So we need a value that we can process on our form submission. So now this is where we're going to set the HTML attribute of value. Um, I could hard code this in here if I would like to. I could technically just hard code a uh, type in here, for example, uh, value one to three, blah, blah, blah. And this would do the same thing. But we don't want to have that hard coded because we want to get this data dynamically from our backend. So this is what we're going to do in here. We're going to get the value from our database for this collection. And we're going to set this as an HTML attribute for value, which will be the value that this item in the list that this selector item, any of those will have a value. Every one of those will have a value. So this will be the value linked to the text and this item that will be available in the selector list that will contain those items, those options, and each of those options will have a text so the user can understand what it is and an ID, a value for the backend to recognize what's going on. And this is what we're going to do in here. So now this is all the basic setup for that. So when I would click on Annoy, you will see the A is in capital. That is the text I'm seeing of this option. And we have here the list of the options, which is rendered dynamically within this selector input, which will carry the selected option and then we'll be able to communicate that with waste with a data store. So where if I now click on annoy, you see we have annoy all in, uh, in lower case. So I will get as the user the visual indication that I clicked on annoy. And on here, it'll show me for the back end, the value. Annoy could be one, two, three, four, five, if you want to, but uh, they are not attached. So you can have a different name for the user, but you can have like a random ID for the selector input value if you choose to. So it's a really flexible way of working with data. It gives you all the possibilities now to have dynamic native experiences for your selector input because you don't need to now render a list of radio buttons or check boxes. You can just use this. It is accessible. As you can see, I'm doing this right now hands free. Um, it is 100% accessible. It works with every browser. It's not hacking things around, which sadly is done all the time by a lot of people using WIST. So you don't need to hack things around with the power of the custom element of Webflow and a little bit effort you need to put in there. You can build everything 
and most importantly, everything accessible so that no matter who your user is, they can use your product with ease and they can, and you can be, um, also have a sense of peace of mind that your product is accessible for all the people that want to access it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this really helps you, that you're going to build a lot of dynamic selector inputs, a lot of exciting things with it. And thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate that and have a wonderful rest of your day and see you as always tomorrow. Bye-bye.